Tonight, I'm gonna to show you how to make chocolate fudge using a recipe from 1941. Stick around. Greetings, my confectionery compadres, and welcome to Randy Makes Candy, where I help you make tasty treats that people love to eat. If you're a regular here in the candy kitchen, you'll know that I love digging up vintage candy recipes, and tonight's another example. I found a Hershey's fudge recipe from 1941 that uses Hershey's cocoa powder and a few other simple ingredients. I have to warn you, though, this recipe took me out to the woodshed and made me get a switch. I'll explain more later. As always, I'd love to hear about your results if you decide to make this old-fashioned fudge, along with suggestions for other recipes you'd like to see in future episodes. And if you stick around after the recipe, I'll share the results of a survey I took trying to answer the question, do I really need to use the good vanilla? And I'll share with you why this is a milestone episode. For this recipe, I used two-thirds of a cup of cocoa powder, three cups of granulated sugar, one-eighth teaspoon of salt, one and a half tablespoons of light corn syrup, one and a half cups of whole milk, four and a half tablespoons of unsalted butter, and three quarters of a teaspoon of vanilla. I also used an eight by eight baking pan, some parchment, a saucepan, a thermometer, and a spatula. Okay, let's make some candy. Line an eight by eight baking pan and set it aside. In a large saucepan, combine the cocoa, sugar, salt, and corn syrup. Stir in the milk, then bring it to a boil over medium heat, stirring frequently. When it begins to boil, add a thermometer, stop stirring, and wait for it to reach 232 degrees Fahrenheit, adjusted for altitude. Be warned, this did spatter a bit, so keep your distance and be prepared for a cleanup on Isle Candy Kitchen. Remove the pan from the heat and add the butter, continuing to not stir. And now we wait for it to cool down. Now this is gonna take a while, so you have a few options when it comes to monitoring the temperature. You can occasionally make a trip into the kitchen to check the thermometer. You can buy a Bluetooth thermometer that will connect to your smartphone and send you an alert. Or you can use a second smartphone and set up a Zoom meeting so you can watch the thermometer from wherever you happen to be. The choice is yours. When the temperature drops to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, add the vanilla and beat until the mixture thickens and loses its gloss. This is where I came to appreciate how tough grandmas are. Beating this fudge is not easy. I mean, it starts out easy, but as it thickens, it gets more and more difficult to pull that spatula through the mixture. Plan on about a 20 minute upper arm workout here. I'd recommend enlisting a volunteer and sharing the load. Otherwise, just go to your happy place and get to work. Transfer the fudge into the lined pan, leave it on the counter until it cools completely, then cut it into whatever size pieces you'd like. Okay, let's give it a taste. Slant va. Oh man, this is the fudge I remember having as a kid. It's dry and crumbly, but as soon as you start to chew, it just melts in your mouth. The chocolate flavor and sweetness are spot on as well. If you like old fashioned fudge, you really ought to try these. I always try to use the good vanilla in my recipes as conventional wisdom, as well as some famous people, tells me it makes a noticeable difference. Well, I occasionally find myself wondering exactly how wise conventional wisdom really is, so 
I thought I'd put this bit of it to the test. I made three batches of this fudge. One batch was made with McCormick imitation vanilla flavor, which cost 94 cents per ounce. Another batch used Signature store brand pure vanilla extract, which cost $2 per ounce. And for the final batch, I used Nielsen Massey Madagascar bourbon vanilla, which not only has a fancy name, but came in this fancy packaging. Ooh. The price is pretty fancy as well, at $4.75 per ounce. I made a bunch of sample packets, which included one piece of fudge from each batch, individually labeled, an instruction sheet, and a ranking card. I asked each participant to taste the pieces of fudge, then rank them in order of flavor. If two or more samples were equally tasty, they could receive the same rank. Ranking cards were returned, and here are the results. The fancy and expensive Nielsen Massey Madagascar Bourbon Vanilla scored 36 points. The store brand Signature Pure Vanilla Extract only scored 26 points. Finally, the McCormick Imitation Vanilla flavor pulled in 39 points, meaning it eked out a first place finish in this competition. I did get a few comments saying that the fudge made with the imitation flavor was a little sweeter and that the fudge made with the expensive vanilla tasted more like a dark chocolate. So what's the takeaway here? Am I making a recommendation as to what you should use? No way. I'm just sharing the results of a highly unscientific study. If you like the good vanilla, use it. But don't feel bad for using imitation vanilla flavor because you're in good company. And if you're wondering, I took the test as well. My least favorite was the expensive brand, and the other two tied for first. Finally, I'm pleased to announce that we have reached 200 episodes. <laughs> That's 200 times that we've been on opposite sides of this camera, and I can't begin to describe how much I appreciate your support. But I'm going to try. When you subscribe to the channel, comment, share, or even just watch, it brings absolute joy to my heart. Thank you ever so much, compadres. You're the best. Thanks for sticking around. I'd love to hear about your results if you want to... And if you decide to stick... No. Finally, the... We've reached 200 episodes.